If you ever wondered, should I use Grid or Flexbox for this layout, then this video is for you. Because here's the thing, most developers use Flexbox way more than they should. And maybe that is because Grid always seemed a bit more complicated and you use Flexbox because it's easier. But it doesn't have to be this way. In some layouts, Flexbox does work better, but sometimes Grid is the better choice. It's just a bit unclear when to use what because both are quite great for responsive layouts. So in this video, I want to compare both display types side by side and test different examples so you can choose right every time. Oh, and for clarity, every grid layout will be pink and Flexbox will be blue in this video. My favorite example is the common three card layout. You will see this everywhere. In our Flexbox version, the parent container uses display flex and a small gap. That way, the cards are next to each other. But as we can see in the browser, the cards are not the same size. That is because of the text paragraph in the middle. I made sure that they have different lengths to see how it affects the layout. And in any good layout, it should not matter how long the text is. The cards should have the same size. To fix this in Flexbox, we need to address the child element, meaning the cards, and apply a flex of 1. This is a shorthand that will apply flex grow, flex ring, and override the flex spaces, so that the cards all have the same size within the Flexbox layout. So in Flexbox, if we want a consistent layout, we are not just styling the parent element, but we also have to take care of the child elements. Now let's see how it's done in Grid. If I scroll down here, I have the same starting point as before, but this time we use Display Grid, and all we need to do here is to set the columns using either Grid Template Columns or Grid Auto Columns. We could, for example, create three columns of one fraction. We also need a gap of 1 EM, and with that, each card automatically becomes the same width. It doesn't matter how long the text is, and we don't have to style the child elements at all. That's one of the biggest advantages of Grid. The parent defines the layout, and everything inside just follows. But let's go one step deeper. Because inside each card, we also have a small layout. A heading, a paragraph, and a button. And since the paragraphs don't have the same size, the buttons will not align perfectly. They're always at a different position. And I think it looks better if they all stick to the bottom. Let's compare how the different display types would fix this problem. In Flexbox, if we want the button to always stay at the bottom, we need to make the paragraph in the middle grow to fill all the remaining space. So I have to address the text paragraph and apply flex grow one. Now in the browser, we can see how the button is pushed to the bottom of the cart. The text paragraph is filling out the entire remaining space, no matter how big it was initially. So again, in Flexbox, we had to address the child element to make it work. Let's compare it to CSS grid. Display grid. In grid, we don't need flex direction column as grid uses columns per default. And the child elements are now defined by the rows. So if we have three items, a heading, some text, and a button, then we need three rows, where the one in the middle takes up all the remaining space. We can achieve this using auto, one fraction, auto. That means the heading has height auto. It takes only as much space as it needs. The same goes for the third row, which holds the button. But the row in the middle uses one fraction to grow and fill out all the remaining space. So what can we learn from this direct comparison? Flexbox focuses more on the child elements. You often need to give each one special rules, either to get equal size or flex grow. CSS Grid, on the other hand, focuses on the parent container. It tries to define the structure all in one place without addressing the child elements too much. So for every type of layout where you're not sure if you should use Flexbox or Grid, simply ask yourself, what is more important, a strict and consistent layout that focuses on the parent element or a flexible layout where the child elements can overpower the parent layout? Both layout types are perfect for responsive web design, but I find Grid to work a bit better most of the times, but not always. So here's an interesting example where Flexbox actually works a bit better. Wrapping items depending on the viewport size. Both Grid and Flexbox can do it, but the way they handle it is very different. With Flexbox, if you add flex wrap, the items simply drop to the next line. So when there's no more space, it will organize the items differently. It feels fluid and it's perfect for things like tags inside a card. Here, each element should only be as wide as its text. In CSS Grid, you can build something similar, using Grid Template Columns and then the trick with Repeat, Autofit and MinMax. This will automatically create as many columns as it can fit in a row next to each other. If there's no more space, it will simply eliminate a column, and if there's more space, it will add a new column. Getting a Grid to wrap is quite complicated, and I have a separate video on that if you want to understand that. But the problem is, it doesn't really look good in this use case. Grid will force every item to have the same column width, even if one element has short text and another one has long text. They'll stretch equally. That's great when you want to have a consistent and perfectly aligned layout, but it's not ideal for smaller content-driven elements. So in this case, Flexbox wins. It handles wrapping more naturally. Another common example would be a simple vertical layout, 
These can be done in Flexbox using Flex Direction column. But then you could also achieve the same thing using a simple grid layout, where the elements are stacked vertically. Because grid automatically uses columns, you don't have to change the Flex Direction to column. For me personally, I have a simple rule here. If the layout should stay vertical at all times, use grid, because it is a bit shorter to write. If, however, you decide to switch between a vertical and horizontal layout flow, maybe using a media query, then use Flexbox, as this allows for easier changes. But this is really just a matter of preference. It doesn't matter that much which one you choose. So far, we have looked at examples where both Flexbox and Grid could solve the same problem. And in some cases, Flexbox worked better and in others, Grid. But for this next example, I think there's an obvious winner. In fact, this is the main reason why I love CSS Grid so much. It's called Grid Template Areas. And in my opinion, it's the best way to structure entire website layouts. Think of sections like navbars, sidebars, main content and footer, or even complex dashboard applications with multiple regions. Building something like that with Flexbox quickly gets messy. Because Flexbox can only go either horizontally or vertically, not both at the same time. That means you would have to nest multiple Flexbox containers. With Grid, on the other hand, it is much simpler. On the body, I just define a few columns and rows, and then use Grid Template Areas to decide exactly where each section should go. For example, I could write nav nav, aside main, footer footer. And then I assign these grid areas to the correct HTML elements. Having done that, all of these elements will automatically flow into those positions. And the best part is if I ever want to rearrange the layout later, I can simply modify the grid areas without touching the HTML code. But you might be saying, what if my website is not that complex? What if I don't need a sidebar, main content, footer, and navbar, and all of that? Sometimes you only have your navbar, the main content, and the footer. And in this case, I would still recommend to use CSS Grid, because it can solve a very common and annoying problem. Sometimes, when a page doesn't have much content, like a small subpage, then the footer ends up floating in the middle of the screen. That happens because the main content isn't tall enough to push it down. In CSS Grid, there's a simple fix for this. If the entire website is a grid layout, you can use grid template rows, auto, one fraction, auto. The navbar and footer will have a grid row with height auto. And the middle section, which is the main content of the page, will have one fraction. It will grow to fill the entire space. So the footer will always be pushed down to the bottom of the page, no matter how tall the main content was initially. This is perfect. Now, for a long time, I used Flexbox by default, simply because it felt easier. I learned Flexbox first, and grid always seemed a bit more complicated. But as my projects got more complex, I found myself rebuilding things in Grid. So let me ask you, are you avoiding CSS Grid because it's a bit more complicated and Flexbox is the path of least resistance? If that's the case, you need to watch my CSS Grid crash course. It's just 20 minutes long and you will finally understand everything about CSS Grid. Click here to watch the video right now. My name is Fabian and this was Coding2Go. I'll see you in the next video.